thank you for coming to this session. Uh, titled Owning Bad Guys and Mafia Using JavaScript uh, Botnets. I hope you enjoyed uh, the topic. But before starting, I would like to introduce me myself and, and my country. Uh, I'm Chem Alonso. I work in a, a small company called I64 in, in Spain. I'm also a Microsoft MVP in Enterprise Security. And I live in Spain. Do you know Spain? <laughs> Have you been to Spain any time in your life? If not, if not, you have to, to go and visit our country. This is Madrid, the city in which I live. As you can see, it's the city that never sleeps, but it's smaller than, than New York. And there are a lot of big places in Spain that you have to visit. This is uh, the Sacred Family in, in Barcelona, one of the most beautiful church in the world, as you can see. And of course, there are other places that you might would like to, to visit. This is Ibiza, a small island in which I'm going to, to stay tomorrow. So <laughs> if you want to rest and discover a different Spain, it's very close to you. It's in Europe, just crossing the ocean. And, <laughs> and of course, if you are a brave man, you can visit other, other cities with other, other parties. This is uh, Pamplona. How many of you have been running balls any time in your life? There is only one rule. If you drink, don't run. That's the only, the only rule. The rest is easy. You only need to run uh, faster than the bull. It's very easy to do it. And of course, if you, if you like another party, we got something special. This is the tomatina. It's a, a battlefield with tomatoes. One day long, one day length. I'm not sure the history about the, this party, but you only need to uh, throw tomatoes. That's all. It's quite interesting. <laughs> wow, we are Spaniards, you know. <laughs> well, let's start with uh, today's topic. The, today's topic is, is quite simple. It's let's create a botnet. That's all. But from the beginning, we got uh, a lot of problem. A lot of problem with it. I guess that many of you have been have been thinking about creating a botnet any time in your life. How many of you have been thinking about it? About create a botnet? How many? How many of you did it? I did it. <laughs> well, the idea of creating a, a botnet is is quite interesting. But of course, as you, I'm lazy. I'm from Spain, so it's normal. So we are lazy. This is a, a nice picture. I would like to show you this picture. Let me use zoom. I would like to show you the, this picture because for sure it's for Spanish people. They need a power supplier, and they are using flip-flops to <laughs> connect it through through the swimming pool. It's incredible. This is more or less like uh, we used to do the things in Spain. No? So that's the idea of creating the, the botnet. We, want, we wanted to create the botnet, but we were lazy. We haven't money. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> we haven't zero days. We, ha we aren't the FBI of the NSA, so we cannot intercept for free the, the communications. And of course, we are not Google, Apple, or Microsoft the, that are running all the devices around the world. And you know, we are Spaniards, so we need to do something different from the beginning. So the idea of creating the botnet uh, it was quite simple. We thought, oh, okay, let them be infected. Let's do something that, uh, that allows bots to be infected uh, for themselves. So the only thing that we wanted is that they wanted to be infected. Quite simple. In the end, if you think about this topic, it's, it's very useful, and the malware industry had been used it around the last uh, five or ten years with rogue anti antivirus and with uh, social engineering tricks. So why not to do a botnet doing the, the same trick? So the idea of creating the botnet is just to create a, a man-in-the-middle attack. There are so many man-in-the-middle attacks that can be used in different uh, scenarios. Of course, if we are uh, in a network, we can use something like our, uh, ARP spoofing, or we can use raw DHCP in IPv4 or IPv6 network. Man in the middle attacks in IPv6 net networks. We are going to, to publish a new tool, a new FOCA, which is the evil FOCA to perform man in the middle attacks in IPv6, IPv6 network just pointing and click. Quite simple. And of course, if you are able to, to manage 
to uh, the DNS, you can do the, the man in the middle attack. But it's, uh, it's quite complicated if you are uh, thinking about the internet because you, you have to deal with a lot of uh, providers, internet providers and networks, so it's difficult to use an internet. One of the most uh, used in the internet uh, several years ago is the man in the browser in which uh, just an, an add-on is installed in the browser, uh, una, an add-on like a browser helper object in Internet Explorer and lot of, uh, lot of example of malware have been used this trick. We got a lot of malware from Russian, for <laughs> especially from Russian, using this trick. This is uh, very useful and uh, it works so well that they need uh, special files to configure the Trojan to attack all different banks. This is a very ancient uh, Trojan, banking Trojan using an XML file to configure the, the man in the browser to control all different web pages from different banks. Quite simple and it, uh, and it, it works very well. But we needed to, to code in something and deal with uh, antivirus system, managing uh, uh, high, uh, detection uh, programs, so we decided that it was very complicated for us and we needed something easier. So we talk about the man in the, man in the top or JavaScript in the middle. The idea is quite simple. If you are, uh, you are able to run our JavaScript in one tab, you can do a lot of things. You can access to the code. You can uh, modify the HTML. You can access to the form fields. You can uh, manage even the not supposed to be uh, managed cookies, uh, like HTTP only cookies using different tricks and so on. Uh, in fact, there are a very well-known uh, project, which is BIF, the Browser Exploitation uh, Framework Project, that allows you to do a lot of things just installing a small piece of JavaScript code in, in, in a browser. So the idea is just to do a, a cache poisoning. The problem is that we needed to, to configure this on the internet and it's quite complicated if you want to infect a lot of bots on the network. So we were thinking about how to do it easy and we did this. So the idea is how to create a JavaScript bonnet from scratch and it's quite simple. First of all, we thought about the Tor nodes but uh, the idea with Tor nodes is, is quite simple. If you are the last one on the line, you will be able to access to all content, you will be able to intercept all communications. Uh, the problem when we try to, to create the rogue turn out, it was that they are using some security tests to discover who is mo uh, modifying the answer of the DNS or who is adding some special files and so on, and we were detected, as you can see. So. We thought, well, it's too complicated. We need to detect when they are sending the test and uh, creating an exception for the test. No, too difficult. We are Spanish. <laughs> the next thing that we did is just to create a proxy. To create a proxy is quite simple because a proxy is not a, a big infrastructure like the Tor network in which all are connected. A proxy server is just a standalone server that people decide to connect to. So <coughs> the idea is that if you read all the manuals on the internet about how to be anonymous, the first thing is connect to any proxy server on the internet. So we thought, hey, it is very interesting because it's a man in the middle schema. So if we are a proxy server on the internet and people decide to connect to the internet through our proxy server, we will be able to collect all data and infect uh, all browsers. So we did it. The first thing that we, <laughs> the first thing that we, we, uh, we need to do is just to rent a, proxy, a server on the internet. Uh, of course you have to, to take care about what kind of server are you going to use. No, uh, don't use any pirate babe server, not even in Amazon, remember what happened with the Wikileaks, uh, not in Megablob. Uh, it's better if you select any country in which there are, uh, there are no laws. So <laughs> So <laughs> we were we were renting servers on Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kazakhstan, <laughs> Spain. <laughs> 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 
then one <laughs> sorry once you install you, you run the server you only need to configure something uh, which is very simple apache apache web server and, and squid proxy and the idea is that uh, with this uh, server we were going to infect all javascript files with one small piece of code two lines only so when the the user connect to our proxy server we go to the website uh, we got the response page okay and the response page has a javascript file then we retrieve the original javascript and then we add it only two lines to load the payload a new payload we didn't want to, to use any payload uh, very well now no, uh, on the internet like beef so we just code in two lines and install that two lines in all uh, all JavaScript files that were across our uh, proxy server. So, in the end, only need to do this. First of all, uh, we created a rewrite a rewrite program to uh, add that lines of code. So we need to configure this uh, this option in in a Squid proxy. And then we added the non expiration policy in Apache because once we infect a JavaScript file in the web browser, we want it to be there forever. Then the code, the code that we needed to, to create is just this. It's a, a Perl script, as you can see, and the only thing that we are doing is uh, we retrieve the, the file with using wget, we copy it into our file system, and then we add it or passarella JavaScript file to, to the JavaScript. And then, of course, we send the JavaScript, the new JavaScript to, to the client using a print. It's a very small piece of code. It's full of common injection vulnerabilities, but it works. <laughs> <coughs> the JavaScript is just this. It's a small piece of code in we are just connecting to the con uh, control panel and the only check that we do is just uh, that we are running only one instance of uh, the payload in every tab. So simple. And of course we wanted, uh, we, we don't want it to do any, anything bad to good people so we created a special advert in, advert, uh, advice on the web page of our server say, uh, saying following. Following proxy server is being used for a security research. All JavaScript files will be infected and all your da data will be collected. If you want to be safe, don't use this proxy server. You know that, don't send sensitive information. After all, you continue doing it on your own risk. So, <laughs> we publish this. <laughs> so, if you don't want it to lose your passwords, if you don't want it to be infected, don't use our proxy. That's quite simple. It's a good security policy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Actually, in the army, you got the same the same security policies. Warning: the following unsecured FT FTP site is for temporary loading and unloading on your own risk. This is a a web a web uh, page from the army dot mil. So it's the same security policy. So it's legal. <laughs> so. The next thing that, needed, uh, that we need to do is just to make us uh, make our proxy server public. So we copy our IP address and publish the IP address and the port number uh, on a proxy server list, as you can see, xroxy, and then just let let the internet its uh, its magic do its magic. And as you can see, in few days we got 100. Um, uh, 1,110 1, different results about our IP address because all proxy server leads are copying themselves. So if you publish your IP address in one proxy server list, they are copying the same IP address to all s proxy server lists, which is funny because in one hour, in one day, you can have a lot of bots. So <laughs> the next thing that we do is just to create a small piece of payload. So the first one is just cookie stealing. We were running our JavaScript inside. We, don't, we didn't want it to, to deal with HTTPS con, uh, connection. We, we didn't want it to deal with secure cookies. We didn't want it to, uh, to deal with HTTP only cookies. So just, we just copy the normal cookies, the unsecure co cookies, and send uh, the cookies to our control panel just using a get. 
Then we created a, a small payload to grab all form fields. The idea is that we hook the submit function, copying all the information in the in the fields, and send the fields value to to our com uh, control panel, and that's all. Just enjoy. <laughs> Doing this in one day, we were able to get 5,000 bots which is not bad. No paying per install, not creating any special uh, polymorphic malware, not doing just, just publishing one IP address on the internet. We are from Spain, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, who the hell is using, is using this kind of uh, services on the internet? How many of you are using this kind of services on the internet? <laughs> no, <it's laughs> if you read all manuals, said, uh, if you want to be anonymous, use an uh, anonymous proxy server. If you want to be more anonymous, <laughs> use more than one pr anonymous proxy server, which is cool because you can be in fact for more than one proxy server. So. <laughs> <laughs> And the idea of, like, the idea is that, uh, that the kind of people who is using that uh, services is, of course, bad people. All the, all the things that we were able to collect were uh, bad people doing bad things. So, of course, the first thing that we discover is the, the Nigerian scammers. We, we collect all information. Of course, we collect also p username and password. But we advertise them, so it's all legal. So we want, once we got the, the password, we get into the, the mailboxes of uh, those people. And well, this is one of my favorites. The, there were a lot of people doing this. This is one of my favorites. As you can see, the email name is, uh, the alias is Royal Hotel England and Hotmail. Uh, .co.uk. And that guy uh, was creating a spam campaign trying to to scam people with visa, uh, visa schema. The idea is they were, he was offering to the victims uh, a special visa to get a job on the UK, in the UK. Of course, this is the, the email. He was asking for money, 275 pounds, and uh, he was asking for money, and a lot of people uh, were, were suspicious, saying, okay, dear, I respect you kindly information, but Show me the money. Show me the job before. Show me the job, and then I send the money. Of course, if the guy was suspicious, uh, the scammer uh, wasn't continue with the with the scam. But others uh, weren't so suspicious. So in the end, they were sending all the information needed to create the visa. As you can see, passport, uh, application form, my resume, uh, passport, passport, passport high quality picture for the, for the passport in the UK, <laughs> fingertips, as uh, you can see, and, and so on. A lot of people sending. <clears throat> this is the easiest way of identity theft that I've seen in my life. For sure, <clears throat> if you got all this information, you probably can create your own uh, mule for, uh, for um, to use in, in malware, in banking malware, so quite simple. Another one which is <laughs> one of my favorites is this guy. Well, have you seen this girl? <laughs> this is a profile in a social network for having a flint and that kind of, of things. How do you look to that girl? <laughs> How many of you really think that that girl needs to search for a boy on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was very suspicious for us at the beginning. Oh. <laughs> so we decided to collect the username and password of this profile <laughs> and analyze uh, what uh, she was doing. And in the end, as you can see, this ancient, ancient queen. Uh, here is uh, searching for a relationship, uh, relationship and dating. It's from Texas, and it's uh, 30. But he, she has another profile in another uh, network. In this, uh, in this case, she is from New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> it's 31, and it's Aries, and so on. And in another profile, <laughs> she <laughs> lives in Virginia. <laughs> 
Any from uh, any person from Virginia who has seen this girl? <laughs> Uh, and of course, in the most wonderful is that in other profiles she looks completely different. <laughs> <laughs> she is uh, from from German, I think. So, so in the end, we decide to get into the in, into that guy email box, and we were reading the the information that uh, she was storing there. Well, that guy, of course, in, is not a girl. is is a is a boy. is a is a he. And uh, he was collecting chats of people who were in contact with that profile. So uh, that profiles are for phishing victims. And this is one of my favorite chats <laughs> in which KK Bill is, is the girl, this is supposed to be the girl. <laughs> and Fiat176 is the victim. Hello, sweetie. Hello, my sweet m mouse. I think we need a name. Okay. <laughs> 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 The second one is nice. How are you doing? <laughs> and the other one says, doing? <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> well, in, in the chat, in the chat you can see, I'm sorry, in the chat they are discussing the details of their love. And the details is are 70, 100 euro that need to be sent in, in a chain for the naked picture. <laughs> I don't know what kind of picture are this, man. <laughs> And, and the point is that this boy, this, this predator is, is a multitasking uh, scammer so he is chatting with different uh, people at the same time and he also fails and in the middle of the, talk, of the chat he has started to, to chat in German. I think so. It's French. He does when to the so <clears throat> we were inside the email box and <clears throat> it's quite nice because he has all the all the victims uh, very well classified in the in his email box and there is a, a folder with all the chats with <clears throat> in which he is working right now and we were searching for mails asking for money through western union and as you can see there was 158 uh, messages searching asking for uh, money from western union so quite simple and the the converse, the, the the emails were like this Hello, sweetie. Why you haven't not sent me the naked picture you promised me? <laughs> <laughs> and the girl, hello, baby. <clears throat> uh, I don't know, but my, by, my bank manager asked me that the other city and country is not possible. It's not possible. <laughs> now we can we do. Of course, she is asking for money that need to be transferred to different country in which it's supposed to be living that fake profile, and she get angry. Fuck it, stop playing game on me. I gave you right address and what's your bank so, Well, you can imagine the rest of the emails. So, <clears throat> another, of the, another of the scammers in that, in, in that uh, test that we did was someone very weird because he was doing something strange with dogs. <laughs> we weren't sure <laughs> about what he, he was doing uh, with dogs and, what, and why he needed to be using a a proxy server on the internet, an anonymous proxy server on the internet. So we decide to use the username and password to, <laughs> to get into the email box and, uh, and we discover something very hard. We discover picture, please, it's, this is a warning. If you, if you are not, uh, if you love animals, please don't see this picture because this is the picture. Uh. <laughs> He was selling this fake Georgeshire because in the end he was selling the same Georgeshire around the world. <laughs> so it's the most profitable Georgeshire in the world. <laughs> he was just publishing the same picture in a lot of places selling dogs and, uh, and any money from, making, mo uh, making up money from, from it. So that is the of course, we, got, we discovered psychotics. This is the, the control panel, how the control panel looks like. And as you can see, this guy was searching in XNXX, searching for mother, rape sister, violent rape, violence. <laughs> so we were, we were about to send this IP address to Colon Police because this guy is not, is, is not normal. 
<coughs> also, people trying to be anonymous. A lot of people trying to be anonymous, and the first thing that uh, they were doing just it, it was just to test if it uh, they were anonymous. The problem is that if you are using a proxy server, you are anonymous to the uh, to the end page, but not to the proxy server. So. The proxy server can track you anytime. It's quite simple. So, okay, you are anonymous. We don't know that you are from the states. <coughs> okay, your IP address is the, uh, is this, and we know the real IP address. So it's quite quite simple. A lot of cases of people doing doing the same, trying to to be anonymous. This is the the the, mo the weird case we discovered. It's a guy trying to make out uh, make out money. Of reading blog posts. It's supposed to be a business. You read the blog posts of anyone around the world, and they will, uh, you will be paid for it. And after one month, he was able to earn 24 bucks. <laughs> so I'm not sure that it, it is uh, so good business <laughs> right now. Of course, we discover a lot of people, uh, a lot of people hacking, doing the facing, uh, and so on. And this is one, one of our favorite. Uh, as you can see in the control panel, we we got the the, the local files in the website in the website uh, that have been hacked. This is a, a web cell, and the idea of this web cell, of course, we connect to to the site to the website, and it was uh, it was on, it has the face as you can see the email address of the hacker. So it was anonymous, but you got the email address. I don't understand this very well, but. Uh, the problem is that this hacker was using a web cell, and the web cell was hacked with uh, with, uh, with a JavaScript. Do, uh, do you know? Probably you know that there are a lot of web cells on the internet with a small piece of JavaScript that are copying your web cell, and are, uh, you are trojanized by this web cell. This web cell was trojanized, and of course, it was trojanized by a JavaScript file. So when the JavaScript file cross crossed through our proxy server, we infect that JavaScript, and then we own the web cell of the hacker. So in the end, the hacker who was hacking was hacked. So something <laughs> Also, one of, of our favorite things is that once you are using a proxy server, if you disconnect from the proxy server but you don't erase your cache, you will be uh, in fed for the, for the rest of the time because uh, the JavaScript is on your, on your cache. So the idea is that we discovered that some intranet applications were using JavaScript from the internet. So we were able to discover, uh, to infect that JavaScript, and then we infect the intranet application. In this case, this is a guy from Mexico. He wanted to, to browse for some porn on the internet, and then disconnect from the proxy server, but he was in fed, and as you can see, this is an internal, an internal server. We weren't able to connect to it, but there is an ERP application with data, and of course, the, a lot of information of the user and the password and so on. But we, uh, we couldn't connect to, to that intranet because it, it's not published on, on the internet. And of course, Porn. A lot of porn. People searching for, for porn. Porn is the business. Believe me. Not hacking. Porn. 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 <coughs> <coughs> Even we were we were discovering this. This is a very nice story in which uh, in a church, <laughs> in a church, in a Catholic church, was discovered this painting from monks since seven uh, seven uh, centuries before. They were painting pinnits. It's true. <laughs> so we were <laughs> collecting URLs, and we discovered a lot of URLs of, of porns. Of course, a lot of username and password that we, we've been selling on the internet, of course. And <laughs> but the most, <laughs> the most, uh, <laughs> the most weird page is chat to rate. Believe me, if you never <laughs> watch that web website, chat to rate is completely different. <laughs> So in the end, once we got the, the, the JavaScript bondage, once we got the, the bots in fact with JavaScript, uh, you can create a special payload. And of course, uh, if you are connecting through a proxy server, probably you won't connect to your banking system. 
or you, uh, you are not going to connect to your social profile, or you are not going to connect to your intranet or your personal website or whatever. But if you don't claim your cash, you are in fed. If someone forced you to load a JavaScript file which is in the web page that you are going to visit after being used in the proxy server, then you will be hacked. So in this example, we got uh, LinkedIn.com, uh, and, uh, and as you can see, there are some scripts that are load in JavaScript in LinkedIn website. So if you are using the proxy server, then we can create a special payload forcing you to download these JavaScript files. Then this JavaScript file will be in fed. Once you disconnect and connect to LinkedIn, the, our payload will be executed. It's so simple. So we can create a special target attacks to several websites collecting passwords uh, of people who were using a proxy server before on the internet. It's quite, quite simple. So you only need to select the target, whatever, bank, social network, intranet, analyze the, uh, uh, the files that are, uh, are going to be loaded by this website and forced to, to load this file when the guy, when the bit, victim is connected to the, to the proxy server. It's quite simple. So I wanted to do a demo in real, but I would like to show you the, the control panel, how it looks like, because we, uh, we of course, we, uh, uh, we turned off the proxy server on the internet time ago, but for Black Hat and DEF CON, I've been, I create a, a new control panel, but I didn't publish this proxy server on the internet, but after delivering the talk in Black Hat, I don't know why, someone published on the internet. <laughs> so we configured this proxy only for 10 uh, parallel connections, only for 10 parallel connections. And right now, this morning, I'm going to show you the um, overview, the bots. We view zombies, all zombies. And as you can see, if we search for the date 28, which is today, today, we uh, started to receive a lot of bots from today, from different countries, from a lot of from the states, <laughs> states, uh, Brazil, uh, whatever. <laughs> and uh, we got a lot of information right now collect from them. We didn't want to do it. We didn't publish the, the IP address, believe me. <laughs> but <laughs> The demo that I would like to show you is more or less this. I wanted to, to do the demo with the, um, um, let me show the website, which is uh, members. This is the California Credit uh, Union League. As you can see, this website is perfect for a target attack because it's an HTTP, it's an HTTP website in which uh, there is a login form which is going to send the credentials uh, to a, an HTTPS web service, but we can inject a JavaScript file very easily in the, in the HTTP web, uh, website, hook the form, and collect the username and password from this website. So the only thing that we need to do in our control panel is analyze the target and select one file. In this example, I select members, ccul.org, scripts, uh, gatag, jatag.javascript, uh, uh, as you can see. And then in our control panel, create some special payload. So we go to the control panel, and you can see we got preset attacks in which you can configure what is, what is interest uh, for you. And in the California Credit Union League, the only thing that we need to do is to force to download this file. So the guy who is using our proxy server that is watching porn and is in fed will be downloading this file to the cache. He, is, uh, he will be uh, watching porn, hacking website, whatever, but at the same time, he will be downloading this JavaScript file for the target attacks. So then when he was disconnect, when he was, uh, when he will be disconnect, uh, in this case, 
select not to be connect anymore, <coughs> the JavaScript file which is in the cache will be in fed with our payload because we don't let it before. And uh, this file is not out of, out of date, so the browser will be using. So, in the end, after the guy connect to the website sending the information, that uh, form will be hooked, and we are going to be able to retrieve all the, this data in our in our control panel. It's so simple, so easy to do, and very profit. So some thoughts about uh, our JavaScript botnets. In this example, we didn't worry at all about uh, doing something special with the HTTP uh, S connection. We didn't worry about a pre-cache object using the ETAC or uh, using a special tricks for uh, to force the expiration, uh, uh, the expiration of the object that are previously in the cache. And we didn't want it to use, uh, to do something with the HTTPS connection because we didn't want it to raise any alerts. So we, uh, and of course we didn't, we didn't have any flame digital certificate and Moxie was t uh, very busy tweeting so we cannot, uh, con contact with him to, to create the, the special digital certificate. And the idea, the good point of it is that we did it only in one day. So in one day we were able to configure the proxy server, configure the, the Apache, publish the IP address, create the JavaScript, and collect all this information. So if we were able to do this in only one day, the problem is how many of you think that governments, intelligence services, uh, bad guys aren't, uh, aren't doing the, uh, the same on the internet? The question is, how many of you think that only one of those proxy servers on the internet is secure? Only one. How many of you think that only one of those proxy servers is secure? No one? Secure? <laughs> I don't think so. Secure. No, that is not going to infect you or collect your data. The, the one you run is not an anonymous proxy server, it's yours. <laughs> it's completely different. <laughs> So in the end, using, a, using a, a proxy server on the internet is a very bad idea, but we got thousands and thousands and thousands of web pages on the internet saying people, if you want to be anonymous, use a proxy server on the internet. So we are going to have this problem long time and long time and long time. So don't use it. So some protection, of course, this is a man in the middle schema and it's a man in the middle schema in which you decide to, to be hacked because you configured your web browser to use that man in the middle, that proxy server. So you have to think twice if it's worth it to, to be using that proxy server. And of course the problem is with Tor networks. But right now we got more news about fake torn networks, uh, torn nodes or rogue torn nodes on the internet than fake or rogue proxy server on the, on the internet and I, I don't know why. And of course after using this kind of services if you need to do this for whatever, whatever reason uh, you have, take care and clean all the information that you download from the internet, take special uh, care with that machine. If, you, if, if it's possible, use a new virtual machine and burn it out after using, uh, throw it to the trash, whatever you want. And of course, VPNs are not a silver, silver bullet because in this, in this case we were able to discover a lot of people connecting to a personal VPN to, uh, to, uh, uh, to be outside of the network in which they were connecting and then from the VPN connect to a proxy server and in the end it's possible to infect the, the client uh, in any case. So take care of it. And that's all. Tomorrow I'm going to be delivering a, a new talk in Sky Talks at 17 about how to do a domain pull the plug uh, attack. And if you want to do any question, I'm going to be in the Q&A room for track. Thank you very much. <laughs>